the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, Sri Lanka Central Bank mandates all licensed banks and licensed finance companies to record unique identification numbers for depositors when opening or maintaining deposit accounts. Eight parties get qualified to bid for Litro Gas Lanka and Litro Terminals Private Limited, says the Sri Lanka State Owned Enterprises Restructuring Unit. No revival for the stock market as it begins another week recording lows. And Skydance Media and Paramount Global agrees to merge, scripting a new chapter for one of Hollywood's oldest studios. From Studio 24, here's Sina Mayadune. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Sri Lanka Central Bank has mandated all licensed banks and licensed finance companies to record unique identification numbers for depositors when opening or maintaining deposit accounts and to update the unique identification numbers of existing depositors. This was initially announced from the 1st of October 2022. The deadline for updating the unique identification numbers of existing depositors has been extended to December 31st, 2024. Depositors must now use the following mandatory unique identification numbers when opening or maintaining deposit accounts with licensed banks and licensed finance companies. CBSL pointed out that failure to record the specified unique identification number or the use of alternative identification numbers will cause delays and inconvenience for depositors when seeking compensation under the Sri Lanka Deposit Insurance Scheme if and when the license of a bank or a finance company is cancelled. After a deal was struck with foreign investors to restructure bonds, State Minister for Finance Shehan Seymasinghe said that Sri Lanka is engaging with local banks on their sovereign bond holdings. Sri Lanka has now reached final or in principle deals with the most of the debt with domestic rupee debt completed, bilateral debt also final agreements also being reached as well as the latest deal with foreign investors holding sovereign bonds. However, about 15% of the sovereign bonds outstanding are held with the private local banks who have their own advisors. Minister Sema Singer said that it is important to pay attention to the balance figure the central bank and our advisors and the Ministry of Finance will attend. He stated that they are confident that they would conclude that as well. The deal with foreign sovereign bond holders indicated a 28% initial haircut which will be reduced to 15% if the gross domestic product grows at a certain speed. Fitch ratings have reported that Sri Lanka banks have provided about 50% or more of the holdings. Sri Lanka banks have previously asked YSBs to be repaid in rupees as was the case with the Sri Lankan development bonds. Sri Lanka state-owned enterprises restructuring unit said eight parties were qualified to bid for Litro Gas Lanka and Litro Terminals Private Limited. A special cabinet-appointed negotiating committee had approved the following bidders to progress to the request for proposal stage. The bidders are Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited, CM Gas and Petrochemicals Public Company Limited, BGN International DMCC and Bayagan Dis Ticharet AS. Confidence Petroleum India Limited, OQ Trading Limited, TriStar Transport LLC, Vitol Asia, Infinity Holdings, Infinity Holdings Sidecar One, and National Gas Company Seog. An expression of interest for Litro Gas drew 14 bidders. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka said that the country's tourism industry is experiencing a robust recovery with total earnings reaching 1,556.6 million US dollars in the first half of 2024, marking a 77.9% increase compared to the same period in 2023, when earnings were 875 million US dollars. Despite a decline in tourist arrivals last June, the tourism sector in Sri Lanka earned 151.1 million US dollars. This marks a 23% increase compared to the same period in 2023. In June, the number of tourists arriving in the country was recorded at 113,470. According to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, the numbers of tourists who arrived in the first six months of this year exceeded 1 million. The expected number of tourists arriving in the country by the end of this year is 2.4 million. 
The anticipated revenue from the tourism industry for this year is estimated to be between 3.5 to 4 billion US dollars. According to the statistics of the Sri Lankan Tourism Development Authority, the total number of tourists arriving in the country during the first 6 months of 2024 exceeded 1 million, reaching 1,010,249. This represents a 61.7% increase compared to the 624,874 arrivals in the first half of 2023. Between the 1st of July and the 4th of July, 21,298 tourists arrived in the country. The majority of these tourists came from India with 5,245 arrivals. Other notable numbers include 1,741 tourists from the United Kingdom, 1,422 from China, 1,253 from Australia, and 878 tourists from Germany. President Ranil Wickremesinghe said that Sri Lanka increased the value added tax to 18% to help pay state worker salaries and provide the first increment this year. This statement came as sections of state workers began strikes ahead of elections. During the last economic crisis there were suggestions to send 500,000 state workers home on unpaid leave until funds could be secured for their salaries. President Wickremesinghe mentioned at a ceremony in Uva region that he had refused to send anyone on leave. He explained that he raised VAT to 18% and faced public criticism to ensure salaries were paid. The first salary increment had already been granted in 2024. President Vikramasinghe noted that development officers and clerks were requesting further salary increases, but he stated that this was not possible without raising VAT again, which the public could not bear. He also mentioned that another salary increment would be announced in the budget for 2025 with the committee currently looking into the matter. Official data showed that Sri Lanka's monthly passport issues have declined in the first quarter of 2024 compared to a year earlier, but labor migration is still continuing at around the same pace. Sri Lanka's passport issues surged in from 2022, where the most severe currency crisis triggered by the central bank. From the last quarter of 2023, new passport issues started to ease. The data showed that in the first quarter of 2024, 220,161 passports were issued down from 282,625 a year earlier. Departures for foreign work in the first quarter was 85,175 persons up from 76,024. Most of the departures are currency board like regimes in the Middle East where there is no bureaucratically decided policy rate and the countries have exceptional stability leading to the import of labor. Sri Lanka also used to import labor and was outward remittance country when a central bank was set up in the 1950 with a policy rate. Let's go for a short break. More updates coming right after this. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. There seems to be no recovery for the Colombo Stock Exchange as once again it kicks off the week in the negative trajectory. The All Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 Index recorded lows at the end of today's trading session, bringing larger concern to the investors. To get a briefing on today's marketing session, let's join with Tarusha Ashokar connecting with us from First Capital Holdings. Yes. Today, the Columbus Stock Exchange witnessed a significant downturn, marking near two and a half month low as the All Share Price Index closed at 11,842, a loss of 106 points. Similarly, the S&P SL20 Index also experienced a downturn, ending at 3,469 with a loss of 36 points. Market sentiment remained subdued throughout the day with minimal participation. particularly impacted by heavy selling pressure in the banking sector and selected blue chip counters such as John Kills Holdings and Haley's PLC this downturn was uh, not largely driven by prevailing macroeconomic uncertainties notably high net worth individuals and institutional investor participation was observed on Hemas Holdings and Sampath Bank through off-board transactions and these transactions collectively accounted for 25% of the day's uh, overall market turnover bringing the total turnover to 657 million rupees however this figure marks a 64% decrease from the monthly average 
turnover of 1.8 billion rupees as retail investors adopted a cautious wait and see approach as a result less than 10000 trades were recorded during the day top gainers for the day included blue diamonds non voting ub finance and the lighthouse hotels while top losers for the day were smb finance industrial alfels and tesagro plc Commercial Bank of Ceylon PLC has undertaken a significant financial initiative by issuing 200 million Basel III compliant Tier 2 listed, rated, unsecured, subordinated, redeemable debentures. Each debenture was priced at 100 rupees. The primary goal of this issuance was to raise 10 billion rupees. This was structured through an initial issue of 100 million debentures. The bank also included options for two additional tranches in case of oversubscription. The second tranche is an option to issue an additional 50 million debentures to raise a further 5 billion rupees. Third tranche, which is another option to issue an additional 50 million debentures to raise another 5 billion rupees, brings the total potential raise to 20 billion rupees if fully subscribed. Following this financial maneuver, the trading of commercial bank shares showed mixed results during today's mid-morning trade. The voting shares were trading flat at 103 rupees and 50 cents, indicating stability in investor sentiment towards the bank's equity. The non-voting shares were trading down at 85 rupees, reflecting a slight decrease in value. How will the stock market's behavior be throughout the upcoming days? To get an analysis, let's connect with Dimantha Matthew from First Capital Holdings. The market was uh, significantly down on the first day and also during the last week we saw a bit of a, a negative trend uh, coming in the uh, stock market and if you take the outlook looking forward, uh, we think uh, the investors are sort of on an uncertain uh, mindset at this moment of time, primarily uh, because of the delayed approach on the uh, external debt restructuring, which uh, we saw a deal happen last week, but the agreements are not yet done. And then, uh, secondly and most importantly, on the political front, uh, the uncertainty that is uh, getting created around that front, whether the, an election is taking place or not, uh, and uh, then when is the election uh, taking place. So all those things are creating some amount of uncertainty and uh, we think uh, the investors are likely to be on a sort of a wait and see approach uh, during uh, this week and uh, we are also likely to see uh, turnover levels being slow uh, and uh, with that uh, you will see a lower retail uh, activity in the market. However, it might be a great opportunity uh, for bargain hunters who may actually take this opportunity to come in and uh, start buying at uh, lower prices. Also, we may see some amount of uh, foreign interest as well. We saw this uh, even last week where foreigners starting to uh, come back uh, into the market, uh, assuming that uh, Sri Lanka will move out of the uh, restrictive uh, default status and uh, taking early inroads there. So we are likely to see a similar trend uh, this week as well uh, with uh, foreigners trying to take advantage uh, of the current situation and uh, buying in at uh, lower prices. Gold prices fell slightly in Asian trade today as traders awaited more cues on U.S. interest rates from a testimony by Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell and key inflation data due through the week. Spot gold fell 0.3% to $2,384.47 an ounce, while gold futures expiring in August fell 0.2% to $2,392.55 an ounce. But bullion prices were sitting close to one-month highs and were also on cusp of breaking back above $2,400 an ounce amid growing conviction that the Fed will begin cutting interest rates in September. Broader metal prices also benefited from a drop in the dollar which hit a near one-month low. Gold sits on some gains as rate cut bets increase. 
gold rose sharply through the past week, breaking out of the low $2,300 as a slew of weak readings on the labour market brewed more optimism over interest rate cuts. Oil prices were little changed today as traders monitored the potential impact of tropical storm barrel on oil production in the Gulf of Mexico. Attention also remained focused on signs of robust summer demand. Brent crude futures for September delivered edged up by 0.2% to $86.67 per barrel, while West Texas Intermediate crude futures held steady at $82.28 per barrel. Both benchmarks remained close to their recent two-month highs. Crude prices have posted four straight weeks of strong gains driven by expectations of higher summer demand and concerns over weather-related supply disruptions. However, fears of slowing economic growth and softer demand in China, the world's top oil importer, have somewhat tempered those recent price increases. The Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated slightly against the US dollar today compared to last week according to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Accordingly, the buying rate of the US dollar has dropped from 300 rupees and 6 cents to 300 rupees and 2 cents, while the selling rate has also reduced from 309 rupees and 30 cents to 309 rupees and 22 cents. However, the rupee has depreciated against some foreign currencies. Let's observe how overall how the behavior of the rupee is now. A short commercial break now, news from the corporate world coming on the other side. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. The Construction, Power and Energy Expo 2024 held at the Bandaranaike Memorial International Conference Hall from the 5th of July to the 7th of July was a significant event that brought together multiple industries under one roof. Organized by the Lanka Exhibition and Conference Services, the event underscored the vital role of renewable energy in Sri Lanka's economic landscape, focusing particularly on solar power. This year's Expo provided an ideal platform for companies involved in wind farms, solar power projects and other renewable energy solutions to align with the government's ambitious targets to increase the share of renewable energy in the energy mix. The emphasis on solar power and energy efficiency showcased the strides Sri Lanka is making towards a more sustainable future. It provided a comprehensive platform for industry stakeholders, service providers and exhibitors to showcase their products and services, forge valuable connections, and drive industry innovation. With over 14,000 visitors and more than 180 exhibitors, the Expo facilitated unparalleled networking opportunities for industry professionals, including architects, interior designers, contractors, government officials, project managers, and key decision makers. The event's focus on renewable energy and energy efficiency was timely considering the government's objectives. The Expo highlighted advances in these areas, reinforcing the critical role of the power and energy industry in Sri Lanka's economic well-being. The Construction Power and Energy Expo 2024 also catered to a wide range of industry segments, from roofing systems, doors and windows, and sanitary ware to electrical engineering, renewable energy products and construction equipment. The diverse array of sponsorship packages available provided companies with prominent branding opportunities across promotional materials, on-site signage and other benefits, enhancing their brand visibility and connecting them with targeted audiences. China's BYD opened an electric vehicle plant in Thailand, the automaker's first factory in Southeast Asia, as a fast-growing regional EV market where it has become the dominant player. The company said when originally announcing the plant that the factory is not intended to serve only the local market, 
and most of its 1,500 annual capacity would be exported somewhere else in Southeast Asia and to Europe. BYD completed its silent plant in just 16 months. The facility encompasses processes of stamping, painting, welding, final assembly and producing car components. It is projected to generate 10,000 jobs. BYD marked a historic moment by unveiling the Dolphin model as the 8 millionth new energy vehicle. The opening also comes on the first day as the Chinese EV makers face new tariffs in Europe, one of China's most important export markets. The duties levied in addition to the existing 10% tariff are an attempt by the EU to even the playing field for its own brands against China's heavily subsidized automotive industry. As the global leader in new energy vehicles, BYD has significantly expanded its overseas presence in recent years. In 2023, it achieved a 337% year-on-year increase in exports, reaching 243,000 vehicles. The National Chamber of Exporters of Sri Lanka represented Sri Lanka at the Korea Import Fair, which was held from the 4th to the 6th of July at the COEX Exhibition Centre in Seoul. This participation marks a significant milestone, being the NCE's inaugural involvement in the esteemed fair and underscores efforts to bolster Sri Lanka's presence in the South Korean market. The delegation, led by NCE's Secretary General Shiham Marika, comprised five prominent Sri Lankan companies, each renowned for their excellence in various sectors. The participating companies were Coco Green Limited, Warner Exporters Limited, Imperial Tea Exports Limited, MA's Tropical Food Processing Limited, and Tropical Life International Limited. These companies all established NCE members and recipients of multiple export accolades exemplified Sri Lanka's commitment to high-quality products and innovation. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. World stocks held just below record highs today with sentiment slightly cautious as growth woes in China and the prospect of political deadlock in France took the shine of optimism about a US interest rate cut as early as September. In Tokyo, the Nikkei 225 index was down 0.3% to 40,780.70 despite official data showing the real wages fell 1.4% year-on-year in May. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index declined 1.6% to 17,524.06 and the Shanghai Composite Index dropped 0.9% to 2,922.45. Australia's S&P ASX 200 sank 0.8% to 7,763.20 while South Korea's Kospi edged 0.2% lower to 2,857.76. Skydance Media and Paramount Global agreed to merge the companies announced late yesterday, scripting a new chapter for one of Hollywood's oldest studios. Paramount and Skydance are to merge, starting a new chapter for one of Hollywood's most storied names. The two companies announced the move late on Sunday. Tycoon Sherry Redstone will sell her controlling stake as part of a complex deal that will eventually result in a merger. Her family will pocket some $1.75 billion, ending an era. Late patriarch Sumner Redstone built the media empire, which includes CBS and MTV as well as the namesake Paramount Movie Studio. The deal makes Skydance founder David Ellison a new Hollywood power player. But it also lands him with a host of challenges. Paramount has shed nearly $17 billion in value since 2019. That, as its traditional TV business faded faster than streaming service Paramount Plus could turn a profit. However, the deal caps months of tortuous negotiations, complicated by the firm's complex shareholder structure. Redstone only owned a minority of Paramount shares, but a big majority of the shares with voting rights. Sources say Ellison had to sweeten an earlier offer to win her support. 
Well, that's it from us at the Nile Business Report for the day. Tune in again tomorrow for more updates. Until then, I'm Sina Maya Dunde. Have a good night.